What's up, people? Welcome back. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Nice to see you all again. Uh, first off, just want to say thanks for all of the love and support on my previous video, how to shoot a two camera interview setup. Today, for me, is all about reflection and being able to look back on a project that recently just happened in my life that kind of changed my life. And uh, hopefully it'll be able to give you guys some comfort, insight and inspiration moving forward in your life and your career. Uh, now, the purpose of this video is just to be a quick reflection, something to kind of let go of so I don't really forget certain things because as the project gets further away from, you know, completion, now we're four days after, uh, you start to lose certain memories and certain things that happen. So I'm recording this as soon as possible and trying to remember certain things that really stand out to me that are really important. But in the coming months, there will be tons of videos being released about the making of this project. So definitely stay tuned for that. But for now, sit back and just chill for a bit. For most of you that follow me on social media, you probably saw that I reunited with my mentor, Danny Gavertz. And as most of you know, he had written his first feature film. Uh, quick little backstory, I haven't seen Danny in about two years or so. The last time I saw him was when we went on our Africa trip to visit Odeki Dan. And that was the last time I saw him in person because right after that project, we left for the airport and he pretty much left for Hawaii. And over the course of two years or, you know, a little under two years, I didn't see him at all. And, you know, a lot changes in two years. And with all the success and growth that he has found in that two years, especially with his YouTube and pursuing it full time, he was able to write and start creating his first feature film, which is going to be phenomenal. But it's something amazing that he's doing and really starting to, um, you know, change the way that movies are made. You know, being a YouTuber and creating this feature film, he had to figure out a bunch of different ways to do it that were slightly untraditional. And, you know, I just give him a lot of credit for being able to do this and the way that he did it, um, it's really quite amazing. But moving on. A few months ago, he ended up moving back to Philly. And at this time, I selfishly thought, all right, he's about to make his feature film. He's back in Philly. I think this might be my chance to actually DP this for him. Like there might be a slight chance that I do that. And I say selfishly because that's just, you know, that's my ego talking. And it just so happened, you know, it didn't, it didn't happen. He brought someone else on to shoot his project. And uh, the first thought that came into my mind was, you know, I was a bit upset about it, to be honest. And this is kind of the first lesson that I want to talk about today is do not let your ego get in the way of your relationships or any future unforeseen projects that may come up. And this was really vital and important for me because I actually had a moment of realization as I was thinking those thoughts to myself, like, why not me? Um, I, I think I should have an opportunity at this. Whatever thoughts I had, I also had like a moment of clarity too, where I actually sat back and said to myself, how can I be so selfish and egotistic thinking that I automatically deserve this opportunity when, sure, I'm close to Danny, we're good friends, but we haven't seen each other in two years. You know, this is a huge project for him and it was probably the safest route for him to pick a DP that he felt could actually handle something of this scale and, you know, that's a big decision to make as a director is to pick someone that you feel comfortable and trusted and that you know could do the job, especially at you know this size. So once I started thinking that way, I started to realize that you know he hadn't seen me put in the work for two years. He hasn't seen the growth that I've went through the past two years, all of the sleepless nights, the free passion projects that I've done for two years, everything to get to a point where I actually believed that I could do something like this. And, you know, the more that I started to shape my thinking around that, 
the more that I humbled myself and realized that, you know, having your ego get in, a, in the way of these things can be potentially detrimental because it could be so easy for me to just have gotten, you know, really upset and maybe even ruined a, like the, a relationship because I deserved it or I felt like I deserved it from the beginning. Um, but luckily for me, I have, and I've been working on my self-awareness and my, uh, my ability to, you know, change the way that I think in a given moment. And a lot of that has to do with just, you know, my past anxieties and things and trying not to let those thoughts intrude my mind all the time. So I shift my thoughts a lot. Um, and luckily this is one of those instances where I did do that. And I realized that a positive thinking really made a major impact in the way that I saw this whole thing play out. Um, I also realized that having a mentor and a mentor having a mentee, there's a weird relationship where it's hard for you to almost separate yourself from that original position. It takes a lot of time, effort, and almost a, a, a reproving of yourself to be able to get yourself out of that mentee or like kid BTS intern type of person. And that's what I was for Danny for a year, like two years when I first met him. I was doing all of his BTS. I helped him out on everything. And essentially I was a kid at the time. I didn't know much about cinematography. I was learning, but nowhere near what I am now and what I'm able to do now and how I'm able to lead now. So that also gave me a little bit of comfort too, knowing that, you know, I can't get mad at this because it wasn't something of my doing that messed up. It was just due to the sheer fact that he doesn't know who I am really right now. And I say that, you know, sure, he might have seen a lot of stills that I put up on Instagram or some of my YouTube stuff, whatever it is, but that only shows so much. You don't really get a glimpse of the hard work that a person puts in. You don't get a glimpse of the projects that a person has really done in the past two years or the the size of the crews or how much of a leader that person has grown into. And um, all of these different things I started to think about and I started to find a lot of comfort in and my ego essentially just dropped. And I realized that there's no point in getting angry in this situation. There's the point in getting upset in this situation. Whatever's meant to happen in this situation, I only wish the absolute best for him. And I know it's gonna be phenomenal and I know that my time will come eventually, but it might not be right now. I, I want to talk about one other thing pretty briefly. Um, I know there's going to be some talk about it, you know, in a bunch of videos, but um, I ended up getting a call from Danny on a Saturday night, and it was about four days into their production, I believe, something like that. And uh, he told me that he needed help and that he had to you know, let go of the DP that he brought on. And, um, you know, I didn't initially get asked to be the DP. I kind of just got asked for, to be like help, to help him. And this was one of the first signs to me where I realized that, you know, some things happen for a reason. Um, and even though I didn't officially get asked the DP, I knew that Whatever I was about to do, I needed to prove that I am capable of whatever was thrown at me and show that I can be a vital asset to this production because I was only supposed to be brought on for one day. And, you know, after that first day showing what I was able to do, how I was able to, you know, control certain things and be able to fix certain things and help out as much as possible and be a vital asset to the team. Um, over the next course of the day or two, um, he officially asked me to DP it. And, you know, those are one of those moments where um, you can kind of cry thinking about it, especially for me, because it, it was one of those moments where I got really uh, emotional inside because it, it was like almost full circle, um, especially going through the mental state that I did and trying to, you know, shape my sh uh, shift the way that I was thinking when I found out that it wasn't me in the beginning. So, you know, whatever forces it is, um, 
something happened and it feels like it was meant to me. It was meant for this project to be for me, um, to do this with him. And doing this project with him has been one of the most uh, amazing experiences of my entire life. I say that truthfully. Um, I uh, I, I just get kind of chills thinking about it, to be honest, because this was someone that taught me everything that I know. Um, and I give him credit all the time for things when I talk to people about how I became a DP and he's always the first person I talk to. Because I knew him when he was a DP, not as this YouTuber director. Um, so when I met him, he was full force DP. I learned a lot about lighting, the camera side, the leadership side. You know, there were so many things that I learned from him to, to be able to get to the place where I am now. And for him to see me two years later do what I was doing on this film, leading the way that I was leading, being a kind person um, and, you know, essentially helping finish this movie in a, a, a different light um, was one of the most special moments for me of my career because he means a lot to me and um, doing this for him also means a lot to me and I'm just super grateful to have been able to do that and Yeah, I don't want to cry, but um, yeah, it definitely gets me emotional for sure. Um, you know, as I kind of just wrap this video up, because I'm going to probably start bawling my eyes out soon. Um, a lot of you, uh, especially aspiring DPs with this one simple message, kindness, compassion, respect, transparency. All of these traits are what is essential in a DP. You know, you could be the most technical, you could be the most knowledgeable in color temperatures, lights, you could do what, you could be the most technical in the world, but if you don't have those traits of kindness, compassion, respect, transparency, responsibility, you know, I really don't believe you're really you're ever going to succeed as a DP because people aren't going to want to work with you. It's going to be hard to work with you. Having a crew that trusts you and is willing to break their back for you is going to be difficult because of the way that you treat them. So coming into a project not knowing the script, not knowing the pre-production, going in completely blind, the only way that I could succeed was by being as kind as I can and compassionate towards the crew that was already there, allowing them to show that they are more useful to me than they believe because I needed help in this project. And they couldn't have been a better crew and I can't wait to talk about them in future videos, but you know, just be a good person. That's all I really gotta leave you with today, so. Stay tuned for some new videos and um, wait. I think I just realized that this is the first time you've seen this new place. Um, welcome. It's kind of nice. Um, I'm out of Philly now. I'm in back in New Jersey, close to Philly though, but I don't know if you'll get a tour of this place. That's, I don't feel like doing that. Um, this is probably the only side you'll see, unless I do some like lighting stuff, which I'll probably do. So you'll probably see it eventually. Um, but yeah, thank you, you guys for listening. Hopefully you felt a little comfort in this video, a little bit more inspired, a little bit wiser. Um, I know that I grew as a human, I grew as a man, as a leader, as a DP in this project more than anything I could have ever have dreamed about. So thank you guys. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.